So what's up guys, Shades of Tech here and in this video we're gonna be comparing all the available audio technology to see which one is the best for your home cinema setup and for your pocket, the best bang for your buck, the best dollar to what ratio. Audio quality is often underestimated in most of home cinema setups or even ignored. Most people don't invest in good audio equipment because they think it's useless or because they prefer to spend everything on their TV and only if they have some extra savings they update the audio output. At least this was the case a few years ago since TV manufacturers started to include better sound system integrated in the TV chassis, especially with the introduction of Dolby Atmos audio system. But are those integrated systems actually good or are there any external systems that with a little extra money are worth the upgrade? In this video you're gonna see or better you're gonna hear the standard integrated Dolby Atmos 2.2 in my TV and all the 2.1 soundbar with independent subwoofer a regular home cinema surround sound system with 5.1 technology and the same system with upgraded 10.2. If you want to know more about the 10.2 upgrade, I leave the link up here to the dedicated video where I'll explain deeper to you. But before we start, I want to say that we are willingly going to compare different technology to determine which one is the best compromise between price and performance. Let's dive into the full specs of the audio devices we're gonna be comparing. First, we have the audio system integrated in my LG 4K TV called LG 55C7B. I was really pleased to know that it shows off the Dolby Atmos technology, which is the newest audio technology we're gonna be comparing, but it basically costs zero because it's integrated, so I'm very curious to know if it performs good enough to don't need any external upgrade. It's also a 2.2 so it means that it has two frontal speakers and two subwoofers for a total of 40 watt power. The second one is an old Sony soundbar. I bought it four to five years ago and I was always pleased by the sound experience. And this one is the underdog because it's true that it's old piece of tech. It's both old and because it's an old 2.1 technology with external subwoofer. But it's also true that you could buy, use or get a total deal or literally having one laying in your garage or you didn't know that you could connect it to your TV and you will just need to plug and play. It's also fairly powered with the 60 watt total and goes directly to compare with the integrated sound system in the TV. So it's cheap, it works relatively fine for the price. The only downside is aesthetical, because you must place it under your TV, in front of you and have some space for the subwoofer. So pay very much attention to this one, it has also Bluetooth features and an aux external input so it's very good to connect to smartphone or tablet. Moving on we have the Yamaha YHT 1840 with a 5.1 configuration. This is the basic configuration for physical on theater surround sound system and it's very powerful with 100 watt per channel and a total of 600 watt and it's my favorite because it has 4K HDR pass-through feature and an ARC HDMI control. And then there is the same machine tricked with a 10.2 upgrade which gives just a bigger spatial coverage with a total of 10 speakers and 2 subwoofer and adds just a little bit of power. So now we'll compare all the four choices with different clips coming from 4K movies, from YouTube or from music. All the components will be connected via audio optical cable to get the best audio experience as well. I will be recording all the clips with my Blue Yeti stereo microphone with omnidirectional pattern meaning that it can record also the back speakers placed channel and this explains why the echo you will hear. One thing that you won't be able to hear is the surround experience because all the editing and YouTube uploading is made with 
dual audio so you'll have to trust my impression for that. In the corner you'll be able to see the power meter, higher means louder emission. So the first clip is the intro of a well-known movie. You will probably recognize that. I like it because it goes from zero to peak and the audio immediately goes up and shows how the speaker handles the peaks. The second one is the intro of my YouTube videos. I like it because it has deep deep bass and shows how the subwoofer handles the job. The third one is the intro of one of my videos where I just talk and it's very important because more than a half of movies is dialogue and this test shows off how the central speaker handles the voice. So what's up guys, shit of the here. 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 And last but not least, music which shows the overall performance of the system. So before we go in deeper consideration, tell me which solution did you prefer just based on what you heard? So after hearing many times all the clips, one thing is clear, there is one system that is massively worse than the others. And yeah, you guess it right, it's the integrated Dolby Atmos system. You probably heard and I can confirm that the sound, especially when it comes to voices, is very very metallic. And this is a thing that I personally don't like. The integrated system has also a lot of positive, like it's integrated, so no external speakers to place anywhere. It also costs zero because it's integrated, but I personally can't use it and I of course need to upgrade it at all costs. Besides the two smaller subwoofer don't make their job right and the surround experience and the boss experience is almost absent. I was very very disappointed by this Dolby Atmos integration and maybe because my expectation was very very high. The other three are a little bit tricky. The soundbar in my opinion is the best of both worlds. You have to place it somewhere under the TV, in your living room, but it's just one sleek bar and one subwoofer. They almost go unnoticed. I must say that for the money this technology costs very much, but it creates a surround feeling that otherwise is almost absent with integrated speakers. So even if you are on low budget, make this small investment and you'll gain a lot and you will really change the audio experience for the best. But of course it can't stand a chance with the physical 5.1 and 10.2 surround experience, which in my opinion is magnificent. Sometimes when I watch movies it happens that I seem to hear some noise on the other room and I watch a side but it ends up being just this surround effect. I tend to prefer the 10.2 experience as I explained further in my other video, but I think that for regular user the 5.1 could be more than enough. Of course it means 6 or even 12 speakers, so you need to have the physical space to place all these kind of speakers, but for me it's totally worth the upgrade. 
talking about upgrade, those systems are in the range of 200 and 250 dollars. So are a little bit more expensive than a new soundbar which is around 150 dollars so it's about 100 dollars more but in my opinion if you are wondering if you should spend that extra money you should totally do it in conclusion if we look to the dollar to watt ratio the best bank for your butt is of course the 5.1 surround system you pay overall more but you get a lot more. So my final advices are those. If you have a soundbar with subwoofer just connect it to your TV or even if you can get a good deal or a used one but don't go over $70 otherwise you will pay too much. If you can't do it go for a 5.1 system even something cheap but it will totally change all your movie experience I promise and in any case don't stay with the standard integrated audio system so that's all for today i expect a lot of questions in the comment section and if you have any doubt write me for an advice and i'd love to help you and remember to like or dislike this video and to subscribe with notification turned on and stay tuned on shades of tech for more videos like this and as always i'll see you in the next one ciao Thank you.